high love it seems like every two to three business days tyler's race is being discussed and there are people fighting left right and center there are questions being asked is tyler black is the word colored a slur there is so much conversation that is happening that she's not even a part of by the way so in this video i'll be mainly focusing on the history of colored people and also a little bit of history with black americans and the word colored where it comes from and just kind of like let's see both sides let's see what's happening and hopefully at the end we can reach a conclusion or not but the point is for us to just learn a little bit more about each other i am african i was born in zimbabwe which is an african country in the southern region of africa which is right next to south africa and i've also lived in south africa for most of my life So for those who aren't even sure who Tyler is, who have not been on that side of the internet, her name is Tyler Laura Seethel. Tyler is a South African singer and a songwriter born and raised in South Africa in Johannesburg. She was born in 2002 on the 30th of January, which would make her 22 years old. Her family is colored, which means that her ancestry includes Indian, Irish, Mauritius, and Zulu, her specifically. Other colored people can have a different, you know, ancestry within them. They might not have the Zulu, they might have the Tosa. That is her specific family's ancestry. She started her interest in music early in her life, made cover songs in high school, and was later discovered by her first manager called Goth Von Glenn. I hope I'm saying that right. After high school, Tyler released her first debut single, Getting Late, who my friend, by the way, was in her music video. Like, do you want receipts? <laughs> Um, the song was a hit, definitely was a hit, uh, that song that she made. And it hit several million views on YouTube and was nominated for the Music Video of the Year at the 28th South African Music Award in 2022. So I just said that because some people think that Tyler is just famous now because of this and this and that. I'm really trying to not to make this video in defense of Tyler, like her as a person, but like in general about, you know, the race issue. But I just want to point out that Sis was famous in South Africa and other Southern and other Southern African countries. Like we knew who she was. Okay. We, she was, she was. Fast forward, Tyler re uh, released Water in July 2023, which became top 10 hit in the united kingdom australia united states and other countries i mean i live in france right now and i remember when water came um like i would be like in a rent i live in a random ass place in france it's like in the south of france you know um definitely not in paris wish but not in paris and i'll be like in the supermarket i'll be like i know this song why are they playing i'm a piano in france i'll be like oh it's tyler obviously so when she released that water song went viral and it was everywhere everywhere um everywhere everywhere you'd go basically on the radios all that kind of stuff and that was really great for her and the sis basically went viral she went international then at the 66th annual grammy award in february 2024 tyler became the first person to win the inaugural grammy award for best african music performance so that is a little bit about tyler who she is and stuff like that how she became you know internationally recognized Tyler has reacted to the backlash she's gotten over her Tyler ethnicity. Tyler is South colored. African singer Tyler. What they call so gorgeous I new singing sensation right Tyler. But that I say, you know what? This is a miseducation. Just dive into our history a little bit or the history of colored people in general how they became to be called colored in south africa and other neighboring countries in the atlantic slave trade approximately 1526 to 1867 millions of africans were put on boats carried to different parts of western countries while that was happening right you know the, the transatlantic slave trade that was happening on this side of africa <laughs> And then on the other side, something else was happening where Cape Town or Southern, Southern Africa got involved in while all these other things were happening at the same time. There was this man called Yanifan Riebeck K, which landed, who oh, landed? No, that's by a plane, who arrived by a ship in 1652 um, at the Cape, right? So he arrived because he wanted Cape Town to be like a refreshment station. Anyway, young Jan van Riebeck 
would be coming from the Netherlands, going down to Africa, stop at Cape Town, and then go all the way to Asia on the other side. So they made Cape Town their point of rest and, you know, refreshment, trading with the local people that were there, who were called the Khoisan people. So they would trade goods, you know, meat and, you know, vegetables, things like that, and then they'll pass on. That happened for a long time before they even colonized and set permanent um settlement there they had done that for many years prior to that and then they decided wait let's actually make this more permanent so they started building houses getting more land assigning you know land to each other building businesses with each other encouraging other people from the netherlands to come and settle there and obviously that made a conflict between them and the people that live there which are the khoisan right so that is what happened as indigenous people they did used to love from the sea so 1652 time came here they came here with a docket they're telling you hey how can you own this land yeah. and the resources the koi did use it nowadays you must have a permit to go to sea where do that come from but you the indigenous 2010 they came here the di sent the metro police i like to think of it as more like someone comes into your home and just starts assigning bedrooms to their children while you and your family already stay there but they're like no like they pretend that you're not there like it's their house now basically that's what happened so prior to this they were really like in good relations with the koisan they would trade things you know normally you know and stuff like that and then after they were like nah more, as i said more people came from netherlands and stayed there and they became the boers right and then they were the farmers took over pretty much took over the land and so they became more and more work that needed to be done on these fields on these lands that they had gotten and obviously they didn't want to work the boers themselves which are the the the, the 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 descendants of the netherland people right the dutch people so they don't want to work the lands right to be able to refresh the, the ships that will be coming to stop there so what do they do instead of them working they're gonna get slaves but they didn't get the Khoisan people because then they, they didn't say that they said that you know they, they weren't the working type because the Khoisan this is the Khoisan person and this is the people slaves that were you know upright you know big muscles all that kind of stuff that, you know all that kind of stuff because then they can work the field of which the Khoisan were not that so what they did is capture slaves from East Africa East Indies Mauritius Mozambique Madagascar and then brought them back to Cape Town so you have this mixture of people some Indians as well as some asian countries taking people from there and if you're a black american you know about the breeding that they used to do with the slaves in america you know force breeding to get more slaves i guess they did the same thing so they have all these different nationalities all these different ethnic groups that they've enslaved that now in cape town they are breeding force bread you know is that even a word but anyway they are making they are basically making a new race which then becomes the colored people because there are a mixture of different ethnicities you know obviously there's obviously a lot of grape from the the dutch as well to the khoisan women to the mauritius women you know there's all it's happening right it's happening that's what's happening so already this is a race that has been created from um, trauma basically trauma yeah basically um, and then within that there's also the buntu person people like me you know who aren't mixed um uh, the, the zulus the Kosas, and the tongas that are in south africa and so there's a clear difference now to this new race that's there so we have the boers we have the 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 mixed people right um who have you know a two percent of black two percent of mauritius you know stuff like that and then you have the hundred percent if i should say africans who are also there and again these mixed people are also african because that that is where they began that is where you know they were born you know how that's how that's the origin story if you know what i'm saying during that time that is where the afrikaans language also started and also became um what's the word invented i guess similar to dutch someone who does not speak dutch or afrikaans might even think it's the same language but it's different because um the afrikaans that the borers the pure boers speak and the afrikaans that the colored it's kind of different because this 
because at the end of the day uh, afrikaans is a mixture of different languages include and dutch is a prominent of that but um since they kind of lived in their own community um the colored community you know there's their own culture and their own slang and all that kind of stuff just as i can believe in america um there is aav you know the, the the sort of english that was created by african americans that is correct but is seen as incorrect english especially i was watching a video about you know the the, the word x or x you know uh, of which someone would be like that's not how you that's not proper english but like it is it is an actual official language the aav it is so it's kind of like that where some boers would see even though they speak the same afrikaans language as a colored person they would see that as like that's not the right afrikaans you know something like that i am totally getting off topic here fast forward let's talk about <laughs> recent years now so our colored people but it didn't become officialized until the apartheid government right which started to reign in 1948 yeah nine, let me double check 1948 right uh but before that in the early 1920s the word colored was more like a social category it wasn't really like in the law like you are colored it was just like a thing that people had you know associated people with a mixed um you know ethnicities with so right in the early 1920s the colored people were their own community right they lived in the suburbs and they spoke mostly english and afrikaans and they were christians they were teachers clerks basically skilled workers and were mainly called colored because of their physical features because of the language they spoke they spoke their culture as well um slowly began to integrate with the white communities right and then the poor boers <laughs> the poor <laughs> uh white people did not like that the colored people were kind of gaining you know they're kind of heading up the the ladder a little bit so when the apartheid government was like bam we are here they really made sure to take away all those privileges that the colored people had and really categorize them and separate them they all had to be classified into particular groups. You know, I'll never forget, I was about 32 years old, February 11th, 1966, on our way to work that morning. And when we came into the city center, we saw the headlines in our newspapers big. District 6 declared a whites only area. What happened is that these dispossessed colored people were moved onto the Cape Flats. You know, that's the whole area stretching from Cape Town to Somerset West. You can imagine, six, 60, plus minus 66,000 people that were removed from the area alone. You can imagine what that entailed. Your family life was broken up, your community life, your sporting life, your church life, your anything. The religious was broken up. In order to control the... Uh, you know the people the the government that was in charge make sure to separate y'all and give a little bit of privileges there 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 so that you are enemies to each other right you don't come together and revolt basically so in as much as the you know the colored people their the right to vote were taken away they said some little privileges which um were better than the black so they almost felt like you know they were better so that was when the divide kind of started or oh, it started you know way back but like they're more of like i'm closer to white so like i don't want to be attached to you you know something like that but more than that there is a historical context as to why colored people aren't considered black by themselves but also by the rest of us right because colored people legally in south africa they are grouped in with black people um but socially there's, there's tension there you see how in the states they used to have that one drop rule in south africa it was the exact opposite in the context of america and its history with slavery black people weren't the majority in the states so the privileged class people needed to ensure that they have a booming bustling workforce that they can exploit so that their group can enjoy their privileges right so they did not want to accept anyone or give anyone privileges if they were mixed with any whiteness or anything like that they were like no 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 you are still black we need you to go to your job you're still black 
where in South Africa, black people are the majority, like close to 90% of people in South Africa currently today are black. So with our apartheid government, they were like, we can't add to this already huge group because we're having a hard time keeping them in control and fighting them. We're not now going to add mixed race people to the group of black people. We're going to treat them with a bit more privilege so that they are divided and it's easier to control. As time went, as communities were divided, the color community really came with their own uh, culture that is recognizable, that is prevalent. In, is that the word? Um, but like they really, you know, had their own culture basically and uh, that is completely separate from the black Africans, right? And the question is, colored is not uh, anymore a derogatory word. Uh Ever some colored people, well, I shouldn't call them colored, but don't want to be called colored because of where the word actually comes from. Just as I suppose some black Americans don't want to be called African American. Some want to be called just black American. Some just want to be called American. So there's definitely different um, like ideologies within their community so yeah it just depends uh for them as i was watching some videos by colored people like did they find it offensive to be called colored i think now they've sort of like taken it and owned it an offensive uh word it is their culture it's not just a race it is a culture as well it is the identity it is who they are so within most african context i i I assume the word colored is used and it's not a derogatory term and it's even spelled different from but that's because the British but anyway in conclusion colored is not offensive in the South African context but then in America let's go to American history now I'm just gonna read something here it says throughout history the African-American community has gone by many names African free African colored the n-word i don't know if i should say it as an african i think that's 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 a conversation for another day definitely <laughs> conversation for another day but i'm just gonna say the n-word for now um afro-american black and african-american just to name a few examples for a good portion of history african-americans have decided for themselves what they would like to be called and how the government and media should refer to them though labels may have changed the bottom line has always been the same being true american while still maintaining the african rooted identity they did not want full assimilation yet they did not want complete separation its shift occurred when the group was reminded that they were still not equal, still not first class citizens, and there was more rights to be gained. Colored and N, just like other racial and ethno groups, freedmen needed to pronounce that they had no intentions on going back to Africa, that they were, in fact, American, and that they deserved those rights that came with being American. They needed a name, a symbol which signified precisely those issues. Choosing a name for black Americans in the 1830s was a struggle between integrationists and advocates of nationalism over the ideological and institutional means by which Afro-American liberation might be accomplished. The political move of freedmen was to liberate their brothers and sisters in bondage and to make sure that the American system and oh the American system had a place for all African Americans while freedom was accomplished. Trying to accomplish freedom and enfranchisement. The group used the terms colored and N to I probably shouldn't say the word colored as well. Mm, okay. The 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 group the group used the terms colored and N to accomplish those goals. Using colored or N were more acceptable terms for the African Americans during the 1830s and beyond because they they signified a domestic rather than a completely foreign place. Some appreciated the term colored, but others did not. And similarly, it was used to title social organization like the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People. Some felt that the term was too broad because it comprised too many people of color. And some African-American leaders wanted to maintain the uniqueness of the group. So long story short, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but the link is down in the description it's a really nice passage um the term colored became too broad for everyone um to be called that basically where 
number one became too broad because it included other people that were not actually black and number two it reminded people of the Jim Crow laws where they would remember the atrocities of you know seeing the word coloreds only you know written there and the word in itself gave this connotation that you are not a human being when I said that it was too general for everyone because then it ignored the disadvantages of actual black people you know because just painting everyone as people of color and ignoring the fact that within that there are the black people who are being discriminated and all those kind of horrible things really just to freeze the purpose the purpose because someone will be like yeah but that is a colored person so it is diverse but that person or the diversity is, is not even including one person that is actually black if you get what i'm saying basically during the jim crow laws the term colored was used as a derogatory term for black americans something that reminded their systemic discrimination of black people in america okay clearly i was struggling to really define that but i think i found something that really says it in a more understandable way a colored person is a name big gods called american people of african origins it was a name of inferiority and it defines of black americans as something less than white colored is a jim crow name for blacks and that whites delineated on restrooms entrances and restricted places labeled as such even the name colored was demeaning deflating white people decided the name to call another group of people they whites made up this name even up through the second world war the united states defined black americans as colored troops and segregated and discriminated them from everywhere else assuming and treating as if they were inferior inherently inferior now you might think like what's the difference between colored and a person of color because we still use that term person of color i still hear it um when people are talking about you know in a more general term so you might wonder like, what's the difference between that so being called a person of color is also in exclusive instead of exclusive latinx asian native americans are all called people of color if referring to them as a political force however not all blacks refer to them as a person of color but referring to a black 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 american as colored brings up painful memories and feelings too when the entire race of people were actively discriminated against I was trying to think of similar groups whose names were changed to something more empowering and a few things hit me. The Indian people, Asian American. Yeah. So I think we can sort of get that. We can sort of get the two sides of it and I completely valid completely valid i'm not here to invalidate anyone to say like oh americans should get over themselves you know because that word is triggering and I, triggering and i can understand how some of them felt when they saw this girl say that she is colored which is something that's just deep rooted in trauma for them so i i, I get it i get it because she she came to your land basically and said this word which is derogatory right so i can understand the uproar and the misunder you know misunderstanding but then the question is why are we here <laughs> the question is then this is for you to answer in the comment section should then someone change their complete identity race because they're in a different place you know and i'm gonna end i'm gonna add in some tiktok videos that i saw talking about this and so that we can all just have a conversation really because it, at the end of the day it is kind of going round and round like there's no winner you know there's no right argument because race is a social construct which doesn't make sense it's not based on science it's not based on anything it doesn't make sense it will never make sense at the end of the day it will never we will never reach a conclusion because it was just a man-made thing you know we're all arguing and talking about but let's talk about it anyway so th that's the question like should then colored people coming from um africa make themselves or, or or attach themselves to the black american culture which they are not a part of by the way they don't know their music they don't know they don't understand anything about the black american you know true culture we just see what we see on you know movies about the true experience of it we can really never know it so can they can they just claim that you know because black being black in america is more than just a race it's a culture so mm, yeah <laughs>
Okay, you see, there was this post on Twitter that went viral, and they said, Black excellence in the music industry, right? The whole joke is that they made Taylor Swift black, and they put her right here. But let me put my two cents in, and they also put Tyla in this. And Tyla's not a part of the joke, but this is why when she came out and said, I am not black, I am colored, people had a problem. Tyla is a beautiful colored woman from South Africa, right? She said she's not black, she's colored. She said this many a times. Um, she's made it very clear that she's not black. However, she is marketed as black. I didn't see her with Afro puffs. I didn't see her with this and that. She not black though. She not black though. But she's marketed as black in America. So that's why people had a problem so much with her saying, oh, I'm not black. Because, oh, you're distancing yourself from black in a black American but they're gonna market you as black when you're over here like they're gonna mark like everyone's gonna call you black everybody gonna feel like you're black because black people have a problem with just letting multiracial or other racial people who are maybe might be black they want to call them all black and that's just not that's just not the case i just feel like this is a great example because i made a video about this and everybody was up in arms like kyla is black she is black she remember and she's not black but yeah and you say, why do you care? It doesn't matter, right? No, what matters is, as soon as they market her as black, even though she's not black, is the fact that they will, all of a sudden, she's winning black awards. She's in black people's faces. They're going to market her to us. Oh, they're going to throw her all in our face. And that's not to say she doesn't have great music. Shout out to her. She's great. But my thing is, they're going to market her to us like she is for us, like she is by us. And she is not. The black Americans think they are the blueprint of the beauty center to the rest of the world. Let's just stop there. I'm going to stop you right there, homegirl skillet biscuit. <laughs> black Americans, let me tell you something about us. I've seen every single type of person from every culture indulge in black, what black Americans build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When people coming over here for the, these African countries and they got their music and they trying to share the Caribbean, they trying to share their music. You want to know who got to like the music first? black americans we the reason the music can even cross the border who you think like that music first who you think putting them on in america first and they crying to get over here because once they know they once they know once they go mainstream here then they really up right so let's not act like black americans have not built things from the ground up we have an entire culture let's make that clear the way we wear our hair even a way a black woman would do her edges on a wig let's be clear the styles that these black women, the Jada Waiter effect. Because Jada Waiter, who she didn't influence? Everybody. I just see so many, every race, culture, and from every place in the world that talked about some Jada Waiter. Who is she? A black American woman? A Beyonce? Let's be clear. Let's be clear. A SZA? Black American woman who have influenced so many people? Let's get serious. So, yes, when these artists come over here to America, they want to market them to black Americans first. Because we like them, they know they're going to do good. <laughs> and y'all think it's an insult because she says she's colored. She says she's not black. So, yes, when I see Tyler speaking in, in the same circles as black women and she herself says I am colored, that's what she's claiming, which is a beautiful thing. I don't say there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, well, if that's the case, then when there's a black woman award or there's something like that, well, let's just make sure that the black women in the room get the award. Okay. Because then according to her video, the things she is saying that belong to black American culture do, but where do they come from? Africa. So it's almost, we are, this is all reverse. This argument is, all, it's like, uh, what are we even arguing? What are we talking about at the end of the day? What are we talking about? Because it, uh, I rest my case because what is really the conclusion here? What What is? And I don't, I hope there's no one that's going to come in like, oh, black America is so sensitive. It's all about race and stuff like that. Like, as, as it should, because they are the minority over there. And I'm not in America, but I'm in Europe. And when you're, when you're the minority, your mind, your mind kind of shifts. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's definitely, um, yeah. So that's not an argument um, because they absolutely have a right to always be talking about these issues because if they don't, they will literally be made to disappear by the majority where they are. They have to speak up. They have, they have to be loud about it because if they don't, y'all, you can disappear, period. <laughs> You'll be like, 
where i am like they don't they don't see race you know everyone is the same <laughs> you know so it's kind of like uh, actually yes let's talk about it so um when i see videos like that girl at first yeah you can get mad obviously like how dare you but at the same time it's like i i hear you i hear you and i think what most south africans want you know black americans is to hear them like hear. you know you can try you can like you know um 21 year old south african artist tyla has made it very clear that she doesn't I actually understand why people from overseas don't understand even though we try to tell them that kind of it is it is its own thing i don't understand because people from south africa don't get it i tell my friend he's mixed friend of mine is mixed so he'll say she's colored so that's even a mix a mix no she's mixed mom is white her dad is black he's mixed colored is its own thing they have their own culture their own types of food their own music they contribute themselves into the society they have their own thing they have their own box in a form if you understand black white colored they are their own people mixed people are their own thing but they're not their own thing i don't know if, you, if, that, if that makes sense they don't have a culture if you understand what i mean because if someone right there a white mom or black dad other one has an indian mom or black dad white dad and a asian mom or something like that those kids all of them will be different but if you have a community this side of colored people they have mannerisms they have a way of speaking they speak english they'll speak afrikaans yes they have their own thing the same way black people have their own thing the same way black people have their own slang white people have their own slang colored people have their own slang but you can't say mixed people have their own slang you know you can't say that person that's mixed has their own slang yes colored people are mixed but they mix from a lot of things and then they became one they became a community and then it just grew from there these people are not like a category type thing do they have a culture because they come from two different set of parents so they will take those cultures from those parents and put it into them like if your dad is zulu you will have some zulu culture if your mom is chinese you have some chinese culture now you zulu chinese they are just colored that's their thing if i were to say oh snap i love gatsby's they created them it's, it's their thing you know the same way indian people have uh bunny chows we have kotas they have gatsby's you, you get me they have their own they are a category you can't just put them into the max into the mixed categories or two different things it's 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 very hard to understand from an outside perspective but they are their own thing and, and americans please don't think on oh, color color no 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 it's, it's not a slur here it's an actual category people contribute a lot in their own right into the society you get me it's not all about you i'm not saying no it's not a slur there just remember we all exist here on this planet not just you is there a conclusion that's the thing because tyler is alone there there isn't like a huge group or a huge massive number of colored people in america that can like stand up for her. she's by herself so the only people that can really you know defend her in that sense where she says she's colored is us online you know we can try have these conversations um but at the end of the day she is in that country so damn they're really just gonna they're not gonna call her colored even though it means a completely different thing they're not gonna call her that because to them it will forever be a derogatory term unfortunately and you might think what if the roles were reversed what if there was a, a black american who looks like tyler example mariah carey she's even more lighter if she was to come to south africa she would not be seen as a black person but if if people asked her where if they didn't know her they asked her who are you you know Ungubani. <laughs> Ungubani. And then, he just reminds me of black panther Ungubani. you know who are you Ungubani. yeah that's the question she would probably say i'm black american and mm, people in south africa would be like okay we'll call you black american like they're not gonna try erase her culture as being black american and make her be like no you look white so you must be white then because or you must be a boar you know because you you have blonde you look like you have blonde hair you know you um, you look maybe colored passing so therefore because mariah kelly doesn't know anything about the colored culture so you can't really just like take it um so that's the thing um unfortunately you know sis is over there so she's gonna have to just unfortunately you know but that's the thing as well because her aesthetic is not even black american it might be similar to again because 
everything is coming basically from the motherland that's where it all came from so everything's always going to be similar to each other period it's always going to be similar so the whole thing of who invented this and this and that like that's not even an argument because do we do we need to do i need to do i need to start you know in the 1400s where people were taken from because do we need to start there we don't need to start there so um at the end of the day sis is in america and sis is international now and people from different countries are going to see her as different things but if she says truth to herself you know i don't know y'all i don't know i don't i'm trying to get to a conclusion but like there really isn't that's the thing with race there really isn't um there just isn't because you will be perceived different everywhere you go but will that take away your culture in your personal life no you know people might perceive her as black in america um but at the end of the day she's colored you can't you can't take that away from her she's colored and yeah i don't know what do you guys what do you guys think about this this topic <laughs> i know we are tired we are tired but it's also interesting to talk about maybe one day we'll reach a conclusion um i think it's great that you know she's colored and she's she's there and um she's being she's being recognized internationally it, it might even make us question why we even why this whole thing even exists in the first with this racing i think we're gonna reach a point where we'll be like wait a damn minute we were we have been named because at the end of the day really the colors were told by white people that they are colored and you have the black americans who are told they are this so at the end of the day who is really the enemy here that's what i'm that's what i want to talk about who's the enemy who is this person sitting controlling and making us fight because that at the end of the day that's really what it is oh gosh i sound so like conspiracy theorist but but like yeah um hopefully like I don't know. I sometimes lose hope. <laughs> so, but anyway, my hair's been through it. Um, I tried to do a sew-in wig with a closure. Ah! It's so bad. It's so bad. I did this. I did this because I'm really like tired of like putting on a wig. So I just wanted something to just stay on and just grow my hair. I don't know. I'll probably do it again properly, but like. What do you guys think about the hair? I am filming on my phone though. She's got a new phone. So therefore I couldn't film on my camera because um I usually edit on my phone, but like the cable thing for my for my SD card can't go into my phone. I need to get a new one. <sighs> so I'll probably be filming on my phone for a couple of more times and then switch to the camera. But like yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. <laughs> Roller coaster. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to correct me, I welcome it. Be kind, be normal, don't be weird. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Um, I'm always happy to discuss in the comments and you know, yeah. See you guys next time. Bye.